In this video, we're going to focus on how to toggle data sets with a button in Chart.js. And understanding how to toggle a data set is very, very powerful. And to explain what is toggle, toggle basically means if you click on a button, it will hide it, for example. And if you click it again, it will unhide. So it will show again. So it's like a checkbox. You, you check mark it, and after that you click again, you uncheck it. All right. So let's start and explore how to do this because this is very, very useful skill. So the first thing what I want to do here, because this is my basic HTML file here, is I want to go and add up the chart in chart.js. So go to chart.js.org and in here we go to the latest day, uh, documentation, which is version 3.3.2. In here, I'm going to copy this here and then we have all, a lot of these items here. And once I have this, I'll put it all in here. I'll paste this in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this here. I want to remove this. We we'll later uh, nest this value in here with a div or what we can do it immediately. We'll give a class. We say in this here, the class will be the chart box div. Very straightforward. Nothing fancy. All right. So once we did that, proper indentation here and some extra enters below here. So we have some space. All right, what I want to do here is the first thing is I want to adjust it to constants. All right, so we have this, and the next thing what I want to do is I want to add the chart.js library. So in here, just go to getting started, click on getting started, or on the sub, sub menu of getting started, and in here you can find the CDN of chart.js. Let's copy that, put it in here save this and once we save this and refresh you can see now we have this wonderful chart in the chart js yes, or uh, the chart from chart js yes, a bar chart but what i want to do is i want to restrict the size of this so let's start and do that immediately by using a style tag here so we say style tag and then in here we're going to work with the chart box class so we say dot chart box with capital letter b of course you can rename to anything you want it's just i'm using consistency here in many of my examples so in this chart box what i want to do is i want to say with and we can say here with 700 pixels and once we save that refresh and now automatically it starts to adjust itself so we are done with this so what i want to do next is basically create a few data points here or extra data sets right now we have one data set here in all these colors so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy it and then we're going to give it only one color for every data set. So we're going to copy this, paste, and copy one more time, paste. All right. So now we have these data sets here. What I do want to do is I want to give it uh, some different data points. Main reason for this is that we can see the difference later on. And it will be 13, this will be, let's say, 23, and this will be 15, 12, and 3. All right. So this will be red. So I'm going to remove this here and remove these uh, brackets here as well. Main reason for this is that this is indicating that it's an array, but it's not. So I'm going to remove that. Next, the, the border color. Same story here. Remove that. Delete all of these. There we are. And finally, we have the border width here. Well, this border width could be adjusted because we have it multiple and we could make it, what we will say, dry by putting it in the options here. So we could say here in the options border width. And then this could be one. And then I'll make sure it's comma. And then we can remove all the redundancies here. This we don't need. Don't need as well here. Oh. And the border width here, including the comma, no need. So in here, I will just say this will be number of red. And uh, this will be yellow and blue. And the reason why blue, well, let me show you here. Oh, first one is blue and then yellow. So I have to adjust that yellow this will be blue so we have this color is fine or we have these data points here is fine because we already adjusted the first one here so i'm going to remove all of this put in a comma here because i deleted the comma remove the brackets here all right and then here there we are and then let's put that here together and i see i forgot this bracket delete that bracket there above if I have the yellow, yellow, I want to have some new data points here. So two, nine, and I'll say here seven. And this will be 15, or we already had a fifth one, 15 here. So let's say this one will be uh, 
13, this will be 8, and finally here again 9. So this one goes up and down, and then yellow is the, is the third color in here. Let's delete all of this. All right, delete the bracket, because we don't have to use an array. It can give you sometimes an error, so that's why you can remove that. Delete all of these. There we are. All right, so we've got this now. You can save this, and if I refresh, we have now everything ex exactly as desired. We have all of this here, and if we click on this, that works, all right. So what we want to do now is we want to put in buttons. So we're going to put in three specific buttons, and each button will be connected to one of the specific data sets, all right. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to put in, well, we can do just below here. We're going to make a new div, and this div class will be called uh, this could be the legend or let's say button box capital B for box and then in here we're going to put in three buttons white buttons instead of uh, href links or well, simply because we're going to connect JavaScript in here and buttons is better practice to use JavaScript because Google or the search engine understands when there's a button there's probably some JavaScript connected but if there's a link there's probably no JavaScript connected because it expects a link to be redirected to some other page. All right, so we have this here, and we are going to put in the button eventually JavaScript. So that's important. So we have here now these buttons. I say here, red, blue, and yellow. So if I save this here, refresh, there we are. We have three buttons here. What I want to do, I want to put them in the center. So I'm going to give it some simple CSS. We'll say here, button box. And then we put it in the center, we say first of all width, 700 pixels. And then we say here display flex, or flex box. And then, so that means it becomes more flexible. And then eventually we say here justify content center. So we are going to align them horizontally. And then of course as well, vertically aligned. So we say here align items center. So that we have the line height being well centered as well. All right, so horizontally and vertically, we are aligning it, if ever this would be bigger. So now we have this, and the next part is, of course, some proper design on the button, because the button looks absolutely unappealing. So I'm going to use here just a button selector. I personally recommend you to use a class here, but this is just, this is just for uh, demo purposes in this case. So we're going to give here this button. What I'm going to do is I want to do some padding, top and bottom, left and right. I want to do some margins so there's some space between each other and then we can maybe give it a uh, nicer background color. So we say here padding top and bottom 5 pixels left and right 10 pixels and then when we say here margin so there's some space between each other 5 pixels and finally um, maybe background color. We will say this will be black or gray that's fine and then we'll say it's color for the font color I will make this white and finally border radius to make it a nice round border. We'll give this 20 pixels. Save this, refresh, there you are. You can see here we have certain things. We can maybe adjust still something, but for now that's fine. This is more than enough. Eventually we could match the color with that, but that's fine, next time. So now what we're gonna do is we wanna make this connected. So what we need to do is we need to create a function here. And this function is basically called, well, we can say show data or toggle data, that would be even more appropriate, toggle data. And then in here, what are we going to do is we're going to put in the function. So we want to trigger the moment we click on this. So on click, toggle data should trigger something. Here, I'm going to get the value, which is eventually, this is zero, why zero? Because we're going to match them with the bar chart here. Meaning that, because here we're working with data sets, and every data set is basically an index here because of the bracket. As you can see here, so this is zero. This one here is the second data set, which is data set number one or index one. And this one, the third element in the data set, which is index number two. All right, so remember that. So this is one and this is finally number two. All right, so that means that we can trigger them. So how are we going to trigger them? Well, we're going to make it here. We say here on click, we're going to trigger the function and the function name is called toggle data why toggle data well that's the function we created here 
So then we say here the following. We say here value. What's the value? In this case, red is number one for number zero. Remember We're about the data sets here. So this is data set zero, so that's red. And then after you can count them up gradually. So we've got this one as well. Put it in here, put it in here. This will be one, this will be two. Alright. So now once we have this, we can make here the function say console.log just to confirm if everything is correct. And we say here, I'll just say here value, we will just console or the console log will display the value that we click. All right, so open up developer tab in Google Chrome, and then we click on red. We should have number zero, that's correct. Number one, and number two, there you are. So this works. So now what we wanna do is we wanna work with the display, and this is a very useful one. All right, so we say here the following. I'm going to say here my chart, because we're starting here. So this is my chart, and we say dot. Basically what we're going to do now is we're going to say here is visible oh, sorry it's not it's visible it, it is is let me delete that data set visible and with this what, what you really do is yeah, this command is not shown in chart.js you have to find it in the documentation or not even in the documentation in the in the chart.js file itself so if you dig in here, you will eventually find something that will tell you that. However, it's really hard to find it. But eventually, I found this here, and this is the most powerful one you have. All right. And then we say here the number. What is the number? So if I say number zero, we're going to focus on data set, set uh, number zero, which is this one here, index zero, is visible. And then it will say yes or no, basically, if it's true or not. So... This is what we need. So we can say here console log and then we can just see what's the value right now. And we say here, I will just get the value here. And if I do this and save and refresh, you would see here now we get true. The reason why we say true is simply this because it is not show or it is showing right now. So we have this one here. So we're going to make here basically an if statement based on this specific value we're going to create a constant as well because i want to use if statement but we don't use an if else so we're going to do do two if statements here so let me explain that and after or let me show you first and then after i'll explain what i why we're doing that like that so we say here is and then we can say here um show value that's the cons equals this and what is it exactly well value this all right so then we have this here so now what we can do here now is to create an if statement. And the reason why I'm doing if statement here because I'm going to use two if statement and I'm going to remove the, we won't use the else, if else statement. And the reason why for that is if you use else statement or if else, you will create a very long statement and it's confusing. It's easier to read if it's just a simple if statement here. All right, so then we say here, if, oh, semicolon here. So if show value equals, equals strict true at that moment we want to hide the value so we, you can see it right now it is true why is it true because it is being shown it is visible so that's what we're going to do here so then then we say here again we get this one here my chart once we get my chart here we say dot and then we say here hide and hide what exactly number oh, let me move that sorry hide number the value so once we did that, we will hide it. Let's double check. Hide. There you are. There you are. All right. But if you click on it, it doesn't show anymore. But you can see here the legend activates exactly the same here. So if I click on this, pay attention on that. But if I click on this, and if we do this, you can see here, this, this is in toggle. And we're now going to do exactly the same here. All right. So we have this one here. So now again, if show value, show value equals strict false and that moment we will say my chart show value all right so once we do this refresh now you can see if i click on it there we are so this works beautiful and every single item works perfectly and this is basically 
how you can do it. It's very straightforward and this is very useful skill as well because now with this you can of course imagine what we could do more. We could make this a real legend. We could even hide this legend here because you can see here, pay attention, yellow and then I click again, it shows yellow, blue, red. There you are. And this is basically how you can do it. And with this you make your own legend in HTML as well. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you enjoy it. And if you enjoy this video, you probably will enjoy this one as well. And if you're interested in Chart.js, check out in the description box the link directing to my Chart.js course where you can learn everything about Chart.js. And finally, of course, make sure you subscribe to my channel.